If you had the ability and the training to visualize the inner workings of structures within the human body, would you use it? If you had a machine that can help you diagnose medical conditions at the bedside, would you use it? There are three objectives to this lecture. Number one, to illustrate how to find the liver and spleen and their associated structures within the respective quadrants. Number two, to evaluate for free fluid and ascites. And number three, to evaluate the renal organs and bladder. There are two major probes that can be used to examine the abdomen, the phased array and the curved array probe. The abdomen is usually examined using these low-frequency probes in order to allow adequate, deeper penetration at the expense of the image not being as clear. In addition, the phased array transducer, because of its small footprint, is ideal for navigating between intercostal spaces, subcostal region, and painful areas. Before examining the abdomen, first obtain cardiac views from the subsiphoid position to establish the overall gain based on the fluid inside the cardiac chambers. Make sure the probe indicator is to the patient's right. Once done so, slide the probe below the margin of the right ribs to see the right upper quadrant. The image should look like this. With the liver in the center, the diaphragm appears as a hyperechoic structure that moves up and down. Also notice the IVC. By moving the probe 10 to 15 degrees, the liver's vascularity can be revealed. As one can see from this picture, the hepatic veins are emptying into the IVC. Next, let's move the probe to the patient's right posterior axillary line between intercostal space 10 and 11. You should see the following image. The right upper quadrant, also known as the hepatorenal or Morrison's pouch view, is the most helpful to detect the presence of free fluid in a supine patient. The parenchyma of the liver and kidney are equal in echogenicity. The blue line indicates the hepatorenal fossa, also known as Morrison's pouch. This fossa is a potential space that becomes apparent when fluid is present. If fluid or blood was present in Morrison's pouch, your image would look like this. The fluid would first collect in the space between the liver and the right kidney. If there is an extremely large amount of fluid or blood in the abdomen, the liver will appear to be floating. The gallbladder is a pear-shaped bile-filled sac nestled in a concave fossa on the visceral surface of the liver. It is best visualized after a fast of four more hours because of its distensibility. The gallbladder is examined in its long and short axis with careful inspection for gallstones, luminal contents, wall thickness, and surrounding pathology. Another useful area to image is the biliary tree and provides answers to the following questions. Does the jaundice patient have sludge or gallstones? Is the reason for their ailment a calculus cholecystitis? Do they have ductal dilatation or cholecystitis, or is their current presentation one due to acute cholecystitis? Place the patient in the supine or left lateral decubitus position, and place the probe in the longitudinal position of the right upper quadrant with the marker aimed cephalad. Have the patient inhale to bring the gallbladder into view. The diaphragm depresses the liver. In this fashion, the liver is used as an acoustic window to avoid bowel gas. This is what a normal gallbladder should look like in the longitudinal position. Normal bile is echo-free and thus appears black. If you turn the probe 90 degrees, you will reveal the transverse cut of the gallbladder. The normal gallbladder does not exceed 5 centimeters in the transverse diameter. Let's take this opportunity and mention the artifact, acoustic enhancement, which is a normal hyperechoic finding found behind hollow fluid filled structures. This is gallbladder sludge, a common although non-specific finding in many. 
Sludge is bile that appears echogenic due to the presence of calcium bilirubinate, granules, and cholesterol crystals that are mixed with mucus. Sludge is commonly an incidental finding that is related to the lack of bile turnover in patients who are fasting for prolonged periods of time. Sludge is especially common in hospitalized patients. However, sludge may also be seen in patients with obstruction of the cystic ducts or more distal bile ducts. Sludge does not cause acoustic shadowing. This image demonstrates a tortuous gallbladder neck, depicted by the arrow. Gallbladder wall thickness is measured between the gallbladder lumen and the hepatic parenchyma. See cursors in the picture. The normal measurement is 3 millimeters or less. In this example, the gallbladder wall measures a normal 2 millimeters. In the second example, the gallbladder wall is thickened and can be measured by placing the cursors. Greater than 5 millimeters is considered thick. Things we would like to see for the diagnosis of acute cholecystitis are as follows. Stoner sludge within the gallbladder, pericholecystic fluid and thickened gallbladder wall greater than 3 millimeters. Be careful with these two findings, which can also be seen if the patient has ascites. Check for the sonographic Murphy sign. And the internal diameter of the common bile duct should be less than 6 millimeters, millimeters until the age of 60, and then plus 1 millimeters for every decade after that. So for example, someone that is 80 years old should have an internal common bile duct diameter less than 8 millimeters. Now go ahead and freeze your gallbladder image and try to measure, using your calipers, the width of the gallbladder. Press pause now. Press play when ready to continue. The diagnosis of acute acalculus cholecystitis is the most common cause of postoperative cholecystitis. Although the exact mechanism is unknown, many believe it is due to an ischemic insult of the gallbladder. Furthermore, the diagnosis is usually one of exclusion made after percutaneous drainage and improvement of symptoms. Nonetheless, the features typically seen are as follows. An enlarged gallbladder greater than 90 millimeters longitudinally, transversely measuring greater than 50 millimeters, and a gallbladder wall greater than 3 millimeters thick. To evaluate the common bile duct, first locate the gallbladder and follow it back toward the neck until you see the common bile duct. Just below it, you will see another anechoic structure. This is the portal vein. If in doubt, color mode may be displayed, which will allow you to see and confirm flow within this vessel. Simply place the color display box over the vessel. Remember, when measuring the common bile duct, use the internal diameter, which should be less than 6 millimeters until the age of 60. As we all know, the liver is arranged into lobules. At the corners, between the adjacent lobules, are the so-called portal triads. These are regions of connective tissue that include branches of the bile duct, the portal vein, and the hepatic artery. At the center of each lobule runs a central vein, which is a branch of the hepatic vein. Press pause now. Press play when ready to continue. In this image, we notice a dilated common bile duct anterior or above the portal vein. This is a transverse image through the left lobe of the liver. The red arrow demonstrates a focal echogenic area that might be mistaken for a mass. This is fat in the fissure of the ligamentum teres. Imaging in the longitudinal plane shows an elongated appearance to the fat in the fissure. Common duct stones are the most common cause of obstructive jaundice. As you can see from this picture, an echogenic stone and its associated acoustic shadow can be seen in this dilated common bile duct. As a rule of thumb, bile ducts are considered dilated if they are the same size or larger than the adjacent portal vein. The spleen looks very similar to the liver in texture, but its vascularity is very different. As you can see from this picture, the spleen lacks the prominent vascular structures present within the liver parenchyma. Here is an ultrasonographic image of what loops of small bowel look like floating freely in copious societies.